race. He ended up, I think it was sixth. Yep, he ended up sixth, unable to survive. She was a great, great driver to watch. Seb Hutchinson does donuts on the finish line. Brilliant result. Absolutely brilliant for him. Um, really well judged last lap. He just about got it. Uh, he did. He, he sort of drove down to the bottom of the circuit as they approached the final corners, and uh, no one was able to get in the draft of him quite enough. Yeah. What a run to the line. 0.02 was yeah. the gap. Yeah, absolute. What Seb did there, he just held it. He held it. He thought to himself, "I've got to defend here." Coming into turn three, held the inside line, and then looked in his mirrors and saw, "Hold up a minute! I don't have to do this here. I can hold my line, and I've got this." Back on the outside of the track, took his line through turn three, and it was his from the outside of turn three. Leanne just couldn't get down his inside. He held that inside as hard as he could. There was no way in among the Sunders that he that she would have been able to get by there and just you know he he did very well at the end of there so that was um, I think the best running we've had of the Kyoto 250 the end oh best in terms of I think clean driving but actually the eventual finishing time was two hours 29 minutes and 37 seconds it's not the slowest running it's 20 seconds or is it hang on let me check let me check my stats well, anyway, we have Sebastian Hutchinson in the channel. Seb, you've done it, mate. How do you feel? Oh, oh fantastic. It's amazing. I never thought I would have won this. Yeah, but the last, that last lap there, you, you held the inside coming into turn three, and then you decided, no, I'm going on the outside. What was the thought in that? Well, I knew I had both of them behind me going into turn three, and I knew they'd be both be battling to uh, get my draft, so I tried to make it as hard as possible for both of them to get in my draft so I saw Leanne had it and then I I moved up the road then into the middle of the track so neither of them had it and uh, and then I moved back to the inside then to cover to cover my line and it luckily it worked. Yeah so you had a few incidents through the race and then um, you and Dan Sanger worked your way through and you, you were doing very very well in the draft there how was it? Oh, me and Dan work together amazing. I think we uh, we dropped back to the back of the field uh, and we worked our way all the way to the front. I was just unlucky for him to get taken out because he would have been right up here with me. It was a. It really was a great um, teamwork. We were talking about it all the way through. You guys were just scything through the field. It was really impressive. And n towards the end of the race, you were at the front of the field for a few of the restarts. And how did you find taking the restart from the front? To be honest, it was it was quite easy. I was I was surprised that uh, people couldn't keep in the draft, and uh, Wilco told me to do a move uh, to go high and then drop down in one of the practice sessions before, and it seemed to work really well. So I did that twice, and no one seemed to be able to keep up with me. Yeah, we saw that one. It was pretty cheeky. So yeah, uh, <laughs> impressive restarts. Um, yeah, well, uh, all that's left me to say to you is many congratulations. That was an absolute thriller of a race and a, a fantastic finish, I guess. Uh, any shout-outs you want to make? Any Anything you want to advertise to us as the winner of the race? Uh, not really. I just want to say thanks to Dan and uh, the uh, Something Awful guys for helping me out and for sending me sets and things. And that's pretty much it, <laughs> really. Sebastian Hutchinson, winner of the 2010 Kyoto 500, uh, ahead of Raymond Blahoff and Leanne Sol Frank. That's your top three. Yep, thank you very much, Seb. We'll get a um, second place man, Raymond Blahoff, in the channel um, any moment now. We'll have a quick word with him. Okay. Raymond! You were um, you were on it all race, and then right at the end there, you just couldn't get past Seb. What happened at the end there? Um, yeah, basically it was the three of us fighting really close um, at the restart. I think Antica lost touch with us, so it was three of us. And um, well, in the last corner. Um, I tried to get the draft of Hutchinson and um, I think uh, Liana went for it also so uh, we touched a little 
um, if you look at a difference at in the end two hundreds, two hundreds of a second um, if it wasn't for that maybe uh, it would have been even closer but um, all in all for a rookie I think um, second with such such a difference uh, ain't that bad yeah I mean you um you dropped back a bit uh, a bit um like in the middle of the race but then you came back through the field and then amazingly with about 10 laps to go we saw you when you were on the front of the field how did you get there okay. yeah i i think Accidentally ramming the low half second place man has in fact timed out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, At least he did it after the race. Oh, he's. Um, oh, he's. Raymond! Yeah, you're back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened there, but. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, Raymond, yeah. I'm Raymond, in the past I've dubbed you as the front wheel drive tire master because you are so good at conserving tires and front wheel drive cars. But I just had to ask you, what did you think about having to deal with the tires today, the R2s out here on the oval? Yeah, actually, I started with um, a zero zero setup in terms of downforce, and um, it actually made it worse with the right front tire. So at uh, at my second stop, I changed uh, to um one uh, wing at the front and that helped me a bit but um r2s are always going to overheat so um yeah it was basically waiting for a caution to happen because it went all the way up to 160 at some point and um not really much you can do about it so was just hoping for a safety car and sometimes it was a bit tricky in the final corner going a bit wide with that right front overheating but uh, in the end um, everything went well so Raymond Blahoff, second place in the Kyoto 500 of 2010 uh, congratulations really it's really really uh, close finish there 0.02 behind Seb Hutchinson Thanks. I think possibly in a moment we're going to get some kind of representative uh, from um, Epic Racing. I have heard we're... Oh, yes, you got hello Elliot. Elliot Sutherton. Elliot, how was your wrist? Oh, it was pretty dreadful for me to be honest. Uh, burned the clutch, I'm trying to save some fuel on the starting lap, which meant I lost a lot of speed. And then I got ended damage in a crash with Kagash and it really did not go very well at all from there. Yeah, yeah we, we saw the engine damage that was unfortunate pretty much put put pay to your race but uh, I guess you must be very happy for Leanne to get third position there um, I mean she was on for the win for a bit so how, how were you what were you thinking during that I'll tell you at one point when it was uh, Leanne Oscar and JJ all up there in the top three positions it looked really good I mean she did a fantastic job she won the L um, the light race yesterday and podium here is fantastic. She really has become the force to be reckoned with now. Yeah, indeed, and putting Epic Racing very much on the map, that's for sure. Yep, yeah, we're on the rise now. Yep, oh well, thank you very, very much, Elliot. Unlucky with your engine damage, and we hope to see you soon. I wonder if we can possibly get a final word from uh, the race control. Uh, Jonathan Palmer, are you there? No, but Raven is. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Uh, well, very, very unlucky there. Oof. Come on, tell us your story. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Got taken out uh, by whatever whatever lap that was and just tried to charge through the front and kept getting taken out and I gotta thank Seb for 
after I got that penalty, we just charged to the front, stayed there until I wrecked, and then it's just it was an unlucky race, but glad to finish uh, glad to finish up front in sixth and stay on the lead lap. It was my goal this year was to finish the race as I told Deco I had about six steps and step six was a win so I finished five of the six steps but I have to thank NDR and Deco for putting on this great race it was a lot of fun yeah I mean you actually managed to start the race this time and that was the crucial thing because <laughs> uh, that was uh, that really that was step one yeah <laughs> it's, it's good you, it's good you got to sort of have some kind of um some kind of revenge for last year's poor luck on timing out from pole position before the race even started. But yeah, you uh, you really were making good progress in the field. I mean, through the whole race, uh, Nolan and Phil they were watching you the whole time, just uh, <laughs> remarking on how you were doing. And it seemed like you just you would every time you got a chance to get near the front, you ended up in a pack of cars and uh, getting spun round just because you had to try and get past them. But it was just too difficult because there were too many of them, and they ended up you ended up getting hit. Well, it, it was that, and then on the restarts, it seemed like the people at the back were just more content to finish the race and ride around, where I was trying to charge back to the front, so, you know, they would lay off, and then I'd get this huge, huge gap in between me and the car in front of me, so, yeah, I'd waste 10 laps trying to catch back up to them, and uh, it was just, I didn't have anybody in the back to end up drafting with for the end of the race. Yeah, that was the big thing I had noticed watching you come from behind. It seemed like every restart, every single one, you would be close to the guy in front of you, and he would usually be four and five car lengths back and away from the draft. So just didn't pan out there at the end. Yeah, I was I was coming, and then I just couldn't make the move at the end on Ori to, to make that pass to finish a little closer to the front. But like I said, my fifth goal was to... My fifth step of the race was the finish, and five or six steps, it ain't a bad day. Yeah, indeed, and yeah, congrats on finishing. It was a, you really did provide great thrill throughout the race, so you can, you can be happy with that, maybe if you watch the broadcast later. Yeah, yeah thank you very much, Dan. So then, um, the Q500 is over, and um, Paso, what did you make of it overall? Um, the, the race time it says two hour, three hours and 30, 29 minutes, but I'll tell you, it didn't feel like that. I think, despite the large amount of cautions towards the end, I think the race went um, really, really very well. I think the driving was of a high standard. I'm impressed, and I really enjoyed it. Great stuff. Phil, any last thoughts? I actually thought the race was uh, pretty great, actually. Uh, the end was probably Probably the best so far in the beginning. Uh, no wreck right at the start of the race was awesome. Uh, just overall, pretty clean race. Just uh, a little misfortune for some people at the end of the race. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing to add. Yeah, I mean, uh, running in the race last year, watching the broadcast, I thought it was super exciting. But I don't think it can compete with this year's finish. I mean, this was just. One of the closest finishes I think we've ever seen in one of these oval races, and it was just a ball to be able to commentate. I actually got excited there. My my voice actually went up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, for me and Phil, that's a rarity, and I felt the same exact way. Yeah, well, it's been a bit of a thriller, hasn't it, folks? Um, 500 miles of absolute... Amazing racing we've seen. Last lap dashes, safety cars, being long, long green flag runs. We've seen absolutely everything there, and it couldn't have been done without all of the months even of preparation that these 30 drivers that came here today have put in. We here at NDR and in X and Passonus and me would all like to just thank you, everybody involved, for making this happen this year. It really has been one of the best, if not the best, Kyoto 500 we've ever had. So from me, Chris Wilkinson, from Michael Passingham, from Nolan Scott, and from Phil Diaz, as well as from all the administration team, Jonathan Palmer, Michael Booth, Chris Ford, Timo Hinion, and of course Spencer Rose, who's put a lot of time in for us as well. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Good night. <laughs>